Hello, my name is Bonnie Hutchins, and today we're going to look at scientific notation computation, precision, and significant figures. Our objectives are to perform computations on numbers represented by scientific notation, to establish the number of significant digits that are in a given value, and to determine the precision of a measurement. Let's look at some examples. We're going to multiply scientific notation numbers. We have two scientific notation numbers here to multiply. We start by multiplying the first number in each of the scientific notation numbers together. So that's 3.5 times 4.0. That equals 14. Then we'll multiply the powers of 10 together. 10 to the third times 10 to the fifth is equal to 10 to the 3 plus 5. We add the exponents when the bases are the same and we're multiplying. That gives us 10 to the 8. So now our answer would be 14 times 10 to the 8th power. Now we need to switch this to be in scientific notation form. That means moving the decimal point one place to the left which then will increase the exponent on the 10 to a 9. The answer here is 1.4 times 10 to the 9th. Now we're going to divide scientific notation numbers. Take the first number in the first one and divide it by the first number in the second one. And we're going to get 2. Then we're going to take 10 to the 12th power and we're going to divide that by 10 to the 8th power. When dividing and the bases are the same, you subtract the exponents. So our answer will be 2 times 10 to the fourth power. To add or subtract numbers expressed in scientific notation, the powers of 10 must be equal. So we have 1.47 times 10 to the third plus 2.25 times 10 to the fifth. Increase the smallest power of 10 and change the coefficient by moving the decimal to the left the same number of places. So now we have 0.01 times 10 to the fifth plus 2.25 times 10 to the fifth. The coefficients are then added or subtracted. 0 0.01 plus 2.25 gives us 2.26. The 10 to the fifth power is the same in both scientific notation numbers, so it's 10 to the fifth in our answer. Here's a practice problem. 7.32 times 10 to the 6th plus 5.38 times 10 to the 5th. We'll now make the 10 to the 5th 10 to the 6th by moving the decimal one place to the left. So now we have 7.32 times 10 to the 6th plus 0.54 times 10 to the 6th we will add 7.32 and 0.54. We'll get 7.86 times 10 to the sixth. In subtraction, we do the same thing, only we are going to subtract our beginning numbers. So we have 7.29 times 10 to the fifth minus 9.73 times 10 to the fourth. We'll change the 10 to the fourth to be 10 to the fifth by moving the decimal one place to the left. So now we can take 7.29, subtract 0.97, and we get 6.32 times 10 to the sixth. In an application problem, we have the speed of light is approximately three times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second. How far does light travel in one hour? We want to write the answer in scientific notation form. To solve the problem, we're going to find the number of seconds in one hour. So there are 
60 seconds and one minute and 60 minutes in one hour. So if we multiply 60 seconds in one minute times 60 minutes in one hour, the minutes will cancel and we'll have 3,600 seconds in one hour. Now to continue solving, we'll take our 3,600 seconds in one hour and multiply it times our scientific notation uh, number 3.0 times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second. The seconds will reduce again. We'll multiply the 3600 times 3. We'll get 10,800 and then that's times 10 to the fifth comes from our uh, exponents, or 10 to the fifth. And then we have kilometers per hour. This is not in scientific notation form, so we have to move our decimal point. 1.08. We move the decimal point four places, so we need to indicate that and add it to the five, which will be nine and that will be kilometers per hour. So light travels approximately 1.08 times 10 to the ninth kilometers in one hour. In science, most numbers are based on measurement. A measurement includes the smallest number of the known measurement plus one estimated digit. These digits, the known measurement along with the estimated digit, are referred to as significant digits. We have an example. A centimeter ruler typically has millimeter markings, so the smallest known measurement is a millimeter. The next digit is estimated. In this example, the known measurement is 3.2 centimeters. An additional 0.5 millimeters is estimated. So the measurement is 3.25 centimeters. There are three significant figures in this measurement. In science, precision refers to the reproducibility of measurements. Accuracy refers to how close the measurement is to the known value. Precision reflects the number of significant digits. There are several basic rules for finding the number of significant digits in a number. First, all non-zero digits are significant. Second, zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. Three, leading zeros are never significant. Four, Trailing zeros are only significant if the decimal point is specified. And five, zeros after other digits to the right of the decimal point are significant. Here are some examples of the rules. Rule one, all non-zero digits are significant. So in the first one, the two, the four, and the five, and the six are all non-zero digits. Therefore, we have four significant figures. The five, the four, the seven are non-zero digits. We have three significant figures. Rule two, zeros between two non-zero digits are significant. 6.045, the six and the four are non-zero digits. Zero is between them, so it is significant. We have four significant figures. 4508.03, Again, the zeros appear between two non-zero digits. We have six significant figures. Rule three, leading zeros are never significant. So we have zero, seven, two. Zero is a leading zero. 
in that whole number. It's not significant. So we have two significant figures. In the next one, we have 0 0.0531. Since the zeros are leading, then the significant figures would be the 5, the 3, and the 1. We have three significant figures. Rule 4. Trailing zeros are only significant if the decimal point is specified. So in the first one, we have the decimal point there. Therefore, the trailing zero is significant. So in the first number, we have five significant figures. The second one also has a, a decimal point showing. So we will have to count the zero as a significant digit. So in this one, we have four significant figures. Rule five, zeros after other digits to the right of the decimal point are significant. So in this one, we have 2.3610. The zero is significant. And so we have five significant figures. And the last one there, 0 0.00910. We have leading zeros, which are not significant, but the one trailing would be. So we have 910 as significant, making three significant figures. In calculation of significant digits, we're going to multiply and divide. The number of significant digits in the answer should be the same as the least number of significant digits in the measurement being multiplied or divided. Our example says we're going to multiply 7.65 times 5.9. We have in our first number three significant digits and two in our second one. Our product will have two significant digits, 45 square centimeters. In the next example, we're dividing 1.23 grams divided by 3.945 milliliters. So now we have 0.312 grams per milliliter. We have three significant digits in our first number. We have four in our second. So our answer has to have three. And then we put that also in scientific notation form by moving the decimal point one place to the right, 3.12 times 10 to the negative one grams per milliliter. Addition and subtraction, the number of decimal places in the answer should be equal to the lowest number of decimal places in any of the measurements in the problem. So now we have an addition of grams. And we find that our lowest number of significant digits in those three that we're adding is four. So our sum would be 34.60. The zero is significant, making 34.60 grams with four significant digits. Then in subtracting, we'll subtract 3.29 centimeters and 1.5 centimeters, and we get 0.8 centimeters. It's 0 0.8, which would be significant in this problem. Applying significant digits. Using the table, we want to find the amount of calcium in one pound of ocean water. The table has listed 85 pounds of ocean water and the amount of minerals in that 85 pounds. We're going to divide 0 0.0307 pounds by 85 because that's the calcium that was in the 85 pounds. That will give us the amount in one pound. So it says round off the quotient to the same number of significant digits as the measurement with the least number of significant digits. Then we calculate 0 0.03307 divided by 85 is 0 0.000361. Since 0 0.0307 has three significant digits and 85 has two, then the quotient would be rounded to two significant digits. There is 0 0.00036 pounds of calcium in one pound of ocean water. In scientific notation, this would be written 3.6 times 10 to the negative four pounds of calcium. 
The precision of a measurement is determined by the unit of measure being used. The smaller the unit of measure, the more precise the measurement will be. The GPE, or greatest possible error of a measurement, is one half the smallest unit of measurement being used. An example, if the smallest unit of measure is centimeters, then the GPE is half, one half centimeter. A precision problem. A steel scale is being used to measure. The smallest unit on the scale is 1 64th of an inch. What is the GPE of the measurement of the scale? Since the smallest unit on the scale is 1 64th of an inch, then the GPE will be 1 64th times a half, or 1 over 128 then the GPE is 1 over 128 inches. Today we talked about performing computation on numbers represented by scientific notation. We established the number of significant digits that are in a given value, and we determine the precision of a measurement.